Hi everybody, Green Tornado Live here and welcome to Christmas in July. So this episode and my next episode are going to focus on Christmas or the holidays as we call it here in the United States. And in this first episode or first part of this I'm going to show you an iconic Christmas flower, the poinsettia that everybody loves. And poinsettias come in many different colors and of course they come in different sizes as well. I'm going to be showing you an iconic red poinsettia which is obviously the most popular color during the Christmas holiday season. So let's get started. So here we have the poinsettia and as I said I'm going to show you a sort of a beautiful iconic red poinsettia but even within the red they're going to vary. This one has got like a little bit of a ruby and like an aubergine color but sometimes they're going to be more of a bright red or more towards a burgundy. Now poinsettia has three components. It has the cyathium which is the center part of the poinsettia. The cyathium is actually the flower of the poinsettia just like on a bougainvillea. And then you have with these parts here are called bracts. You have basically like almost like red or colored bracts and also green bracts, okay? And uh, so those are the components of the poinsettia. We're going to be using uh, my Flower Pro poinsettia and you can see here this shows obviously some of the different colors. Plus also you can do fantasy poinsettias like this one has been edged with silver and you could do these with glitters and different other applications on for a different color combination. Um, the poinsettia uh, Flower Pro is, has got two parts to it. So this is actually going to give me the cyathium mold. So these will be the three cavities of the cyathium. These are going to be for the basically colored, or in this case, red bracts. And then these will be for the green bracts here. This is a back veiner, and you'll see how I use that in the second and third part for the red colored bracts and also for the leaves. Now this is also uh, can be used uh, for other application, like this one I'm going to start off with, which is going to give you almost like a heart shape that can be used for like lisianthus stamens. The center part of the lisianthus has almost like two little heart-shaped balloon stamens. So you can use this for other things. And then these can actually be used for other leaves as well and petals. Um, so it's a very useful set. And the back veiner here, I use this on quite a few of my different um, Flower Pro products. And you'll see those in some of my Cake Flix TV videos. And also you'll see these uh, used, like on my episode on Fabulous Ferns, I use, on Fabulous Foliage, I use this for the back of the ferns. Now we're going to start off with uh, taking a uh, 28 gauge wire and I'm going to use the 28 gauge wire and I'm just going to cut this into thirds. You know, most of the time when I'm making a flower like say a poinsettia or a lily or whatever, I'm usually using third length wires. Um, I'm using green wires here because we won't be taping these. So sometimes we're not specific about whether it needs to be green or white, but here it would. Um, a lot of you have watched me on Cake Flicks before and I use magnets, so generally a magnet is a really good way to stay organized. And you'll need nine of these wires so because we're going to be making nine center cyathium, three of each size. Now um, in my classes I use, this is the sort of same concept, it's a little magnet here, so I have obviously my wires here, okay? But uh, when I'm setting up to make a flower I'll often have everything sort of lined up in place we call that mise en, mise en place, which basically everything is in place. It means it's just an efficient way of having everything you need at the right time. Now I'm going to take um, some fine tweezers, and with my fine tweezers I'm going to then bend three wires at a time. I want to have just a little bit of the wire exposed, okay? And then I'm going to just bend these over, so I'm just going to make a small hook on the end of those. And uh, so these hooks, as you can see, now size guide, again, if you've been following me on my cake flicks, uh, green Tornado Adventures. You'll see how um, I use the size guide a lot. And these hooks want to be about four millimeters, um, which is about sort of three eighths of an inch, okay? Um, if you don't have a size guide, you can go to nicholaslodge.com and you'll be able to download um, PDF on nicholaslodge.com under recipes and templates on cardstock and then just cut with a, or use a paper pole punch and then cut around with a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife or scalpel and you can even uh, laminate that. Now when, um, also while you're there, you can download the instructions. So I do have an instruction sheet there uh, for the poinsettia. Okay, so following the instructions, it will tell you to take uh, 28 gauge wire, green wires, you're gonna hook them on the end. Now we're going to measure off using my size guide, we're gonna measure off number five balls of paste. I'm using here Renshaw, so I'm using here the Renshaw flower and modeling paste, or as we call it in the US, gum paste. Um, I'm using the pre-colored yellow. Alternatively, you could of course also use white and then just add some yellow gel color to this, all right? Um, and, um, but as I said, so either use pre-colored uh, paste or you can obviously just color your paste. You don't need a lot of this. 
And I'm going to measure off number five size, which I've already have pre-done. So when we use the size guide, we're going to use on here. Uh, so basically one third is going to be below the hole and two thirds is going to be above the top of it. And then you'll make another two balls of paste comparable size. Now, I'm just going to show you one of each size. When you do this, you'll make a total of nine of these number five balls of paste. I'm going to keep this on a little silicone mat underneath a little container that just stops them drying out. Now, we're going to start off with the cyathium. And I'm going to start off with the first one, which is going to be this one here, uh, which is going to be almost like a, a balloon shape, okay? And uh, what it actually does, it looks just a little bit like a balloon, as you can see here. That's the sort of the shape of it. And this is going to be the first one. And um, so we're going to take your paste here. And with your paste, now each time you take your little ball of paste, I'm going to touch my finger on some vegetable fat or vegetable shortening and just going to basically just condition the paste. Now when I come on to the second and third part of this episode, I will be using red and green. I'm going to talk about other ways you can use the Renshaw product, but this is just straight out of the pack, okay? I'm going to take a wire and you can either dip that in egg white or you can brush a little bit of egg white on there with, with a uh, brush. And I'm going to insert that into the ball of paste using a little corn flour corn starch, which I have in a little white knee-high pop sock. Okay, I'm going to then just mold this around the bottom. So I'm just going to create like a little, um, almost like a little balloon shape, you can see here. Okay, and then I'm going to put this into the heart shape part of the mold there. And when I do this, I'm going to use my little companion tool. All right, and I'm going to just hold the companion tool right at the indentation of the heart. So where the actual heart you can see the indentation of the heart. I'm going to hold my companion tool there. And I'm just going to push this in against. And so you see here, you're going to get this little in. So you just hold the companion tool there. You push against the companion tool needle and then you turn it round the other way. And you're going to re-press it in there. So what you're actually going to do is you're going to get this little, almost like a little balloon shape. Okay, so you see it looks a bit like a Mickey Mouse balloon. Okay, but um, so you press one side, you flip it over the other side, and that will give you your, your shape, all right? So that's going to give you the first cyathium. And then you just will place those into um, the cyatheums, you place those into your little straws. Now the straws um, you can use, you can cover a whole block with straws like these. These are cake pop straws. You can also use cocktail straws. You just buy these, obviously in most supermarkets or grocery stores, cut these in thirds. So you can cover a whole block of styrofoam with these. And this is great when you're doing, um, when you're doing lots of, say, if you were doing, say, three poinsettias, and you just put those into the little straw like this. Because these wires are very thin, and they will bend very easily. So this is the way that I always use when I'm using 28 or 30 gauge wires. We then move on to uh, the next one, which is going to be the medium ones. Remember, you would make three of the, in the new production list, it tells you uh, on the instructions, uh, obviously, uh, how many of each you need make. So it's three of each. We're then going to move on to the next one. Now the next one is going to be this one here. And uh, it's going to have almost like a pair of lips. It looks a little bit like a frog. And again, it's going to put a little bit of egg white. Remember, you can either dip your hook in there or you can brush that on, mold this down. Now I'm using just a bright yellow. As I said, this is straight out of the pack. But some, um, some poinsettias, if you do a search on, say, Google, you'll see the center can be a little bit more of a paler yellow. So you could, of course, use white. Now here, um, we're going to have, as I said, on one side there, you're going to have the, the little lips. So what we're going to do here, we're going to take the little ball, okay, and I'm going to push that into, so I'm actually going to just like push it in with my finger. So I'm actually sort of pushing it into the, like the little lip shape. And then with my, with my fingers, I'm just going to sort of re round make this a little rounded. So you see how you're going to get that sort of shape. Think of like a little bit like an orchid column, okay? And then we take this off. You see how you're going to get almost these like little, they will look like a little pair of lips, okay? So you're going to get this like little pair of lips there like that. So they only need to be on one side. So that one, we don't rotate that. You're just going to do um, the lips and then just mold the back. Now the third one, which is on the opposite side of the mold here, looks a little bit almost like a martini shaker, okay? So you get this almost like the top of a martini shaker and then you have this little feathery part there. 
and these are the three, as I said, flowers. Now, in the poinsettia I'm showing you, in the production list, it has uh, for a small poinsettia and for basically the size I'm making, which I'm calling a medium-sized poinsettia. And um, it tells you what you need to make for each of them, including the cyathium, also the bracts, uh, red bracts or colored bracts, and also your um, green bracts. But, uh, so here we're going to do the, the uh, third one here. And then what we do here is with this one, I'm going to put this into the mold. And I'm just going to use the end of my, now you can either use your companion tool or you can use your Dresden tool just to sort of push that into the end there like that. And you can see how it looks a little bit like almost like a martini shaker shape. Okay. But you can also do that with your, you can take your little companion tool and press this in. You're going to turn this around and you're going to do it on the other side. I'm going to squash that in there like so. So when you take this out, you're going to get this little, the shape here, like almost like the little martini shaker shape. And then um, what I do is put this onto the edge of my little foam pad. So you can use any type of firm uh, flower pad. And then using my companion tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create this like little feathery part here on each side. And you can then, once you've done that little feathery part, you can then take some spring action scissors. And then with my spring action scissors, I'm just going to make some little cuts on there as well. You just almost just squash that in the middle and you just get these like little, almost like little hairs on the top of it. Okay. And you see so you will make um, obviously three of those. And uh, so though those need to dry um, along with the uh, next, uh, obviously, components. And uh, so that is how we make the cyathium. I'll be right back after this short break. Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge, an internationally known and recognized pastry chef and master cake artist. My signature color is apple green, and I travel the globe extensively teaching cake and pastry professionals and judging at cake shows. This busy schedule earned me the nickname several years ago of the Green Tornado. I'm originally from England, but have called Atlanta, Georgia at home for the past three decades. And this is where my base of operation is located with my retail gallery, my online store fulfillment center, and my classroom, where I teach a variety of cake and pastry related classes, including the Renshaw Academy modules and host amazing instructors like CakeFlix TV star, Sydney Galpern. I have developed my own line of exclusive Nicholas Lodge branded products, as well as the Flower Pro line of silicone molds in collaboration with Katie Sue Designs, all of which are used around the world by fellow cake artists and pastry chefs. So join me on CakeFlix TV for the next episode of The Green Tornado Live. Sweet wishes. Welcome back. So for making the Brax, which is the next part of the poinsettia, uh, these are in three sizes, okay? For the, the medium-sized poinsettia I'm showing you, I'm gonna make an assortment of each size, okay? Uh, in your directions, it has the directions for the small poinsettia, so if you're making the smaller poinsettia, you just use actually the small and the medium Brax, okay? And you don't use the large or the biggest size leaf. Um, anyway, so when we make these, we're going to use red paste. Now, what I'm actually using here is I'm using Renshaw's uh, red gum paste or flower modeling paste. In the UK, it's called Carnation Red. Here in the US, it's just called red. And what I have here is I have 85 grams of this, okay? And then to that, I'm going to add 15 grams of sugar paste or rolled fondant. And I'm using here red sugar paste or rolled fondant. Now, the, what this does is add in a little bit of the sugar paste or rolled fondant to the paste. It means that you end up with a paste that is not going to dry quite as quickly because the Renshaw product does dry very quick. Um, especially like here in the United States and countries where we have AC, the air conditioning on all the time, it does sort of tend to dry the paste out. So I found 85 grams of flour modeling paste and 15 grams of sugar paste. All right, now when you're using, uh, in my Flower Pro and on my videos, you'll be able to see this, but these are all different formulas. And so for example, because we're adding colored sugar paste, when I make a rose, like say for example, this rose is like a blood red color, uh, more of a darker red. So what I actually do there is in my formulations, I use 85 grams of red uh, flower modeling paste, like in the UK, that's called carnation red. Then I take 10 grams of purple sugar paste, all right? And then I take five grams of chocolate brown. 
And what that means is then you're adding the chocolate brown and the purple to the red, you're going to get more of a sort of a, a blood red color. But here I want to keep this bright red, so I'm just going to use the red paste. Now, all you do is you're just going to mix this up. Now, Renshaw product is also vegan, all right? It doesn't contain any egg white. But when I'm using, uh, when I'm doing flowers where I need a little bit more elasticity, um, a lot of times what I would do in my classes, I use a pipette and I just suck up a little bit of egg white in the pipette like this. And then what we do is you just can add a little bit of egg white um, because what it does, it gives you paste elasticity. So you can just add a little bit of egg white Okay, and if you wanted to keep it vegan, you can actually use aquafaba, which is obviously the liquid from garbanzo beans, from chickpeas, uh, which you boil and that will sterilize it. But I'm just adding a little bit of egg white to this. And then what we do is you then knead this through. But if you watch some of my um, other flour making videos, you'll see I do this. So what this does, this is actually going to give my paste more elasticity. So when I'm doing flours like roses, peonies, or um, flowers like that, uh, this will help. And even in the case of the red, it will just stop it drying, uh, drying out the paste, okay? But you see how it's got more elasticity now uh, due to that. Now, once you've uh, combined the paste together, we're going to then measure off your paste. Now, when we do the uh, bracts, all right, we're gonna start off with the smallest bracts here, which are the little tiny bracts. And uh, in your directions, it says three or four of these, okay? So you can make three or four of this size. We're going to be using the size guide. Now we're actually going to be using number six small, number seven small, and number eight small, okay? So this means six small wants to just go through the hole, okay? So that means you'd measure off uh, another three, um, another two or three of these, all right, to give you the balls of paste. And of course, if you were making, say, three poinsettias for a wedding cake, you can make all of your small ones at the same time. We're going to take a little bit of vegetable shortening into this. Each time I do this, it conditions it, and I'm using a little bit of corn flour um, to do this. Now, there's two ways to use my flour pro molds, all right? One is to actually put, the, uh, put a ball of paste, make it into a carrot, and put it onto the wire. And then the second is actually to push the paste in the mold and insert the wire afterwards. I'm going to show you both techniques. Now this is a 28 gauge wire. Um, for the bracts, for these red parts, you could use red or green, okay? But anyway, so what we do here, you're gonna take, first of all, just a little tiny, tiny amount, and I do mean a tiny, tiny amount of vegetable fat or shortening, and just put this into the mold. We're gonna make that into a little sausage, into a little carrot shape, which wants to be about two thirds of the length of the mold, okay? We're gonna take your wire, and you're either gonna dip it or brush it with egg white, going to insert that into the into there like so. So pretty much the wire is right at the end there. I'm just going to mold this around the bottom, okay? And then usually just pop a little corn flour on your paste, especially like because we're going to be pressing this in. I'm just going to press this into the mold. And then what I will actually do there is I'm going to now press with my cosmetic sponge to the ends. Now this is what, um, with Flower Pro, you get that sort of thin edge, all right? And then you're going to get that sort of uh, thicker part in the middle of your as I said, the poinsettia, okay? So you're just gonna press that on like this. Okay, so you've actually pressed this into the cavity. We're then gonna take the back vena. Now the little V shape, all you do is you line the little V, the v shape up, up where the wire is. I'm just gonna press onto the back there like so. And when you take that out, I'm just gonna press in with your fingers so you see how this is gonna give you the back vena as well. All right, and then you're just gonna peel the paste off. Just gonna mold this around going to pinch around the base and you see that's going to give you basically your little bract. So the concept behind Flower Pro is very simple. It just simplifies and re really is reinvented making sugar flowers in a more sort of productive way for as a more commercial application. So rather than using traditional cutters and then obviously going on to use obviously veiners and a groove board, your investment is basically just in the mold. Now when we, uh, we're going to soften on the back. So this is the front of the pedal, all right? So this is the back of the pedal where we've got the slightly raised ridges. So in, um, in doing this, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can use use obviously here a like a medium ball in tool you can use a large stick and you see they have comparable ends on them like that or just put a little bit more pressure on that one there we go and just as I said just be as I said don't put too much pressure on there but you can use your as I said your stick here and just gonna go half on the paste and half on the pad 
But most of the time when I'm working with Flower Pro, I use my little companion tool. And you saw, if you've watched my episode in doing the, um, for example, hydrangea, I use this technique. So I'm using very much like in cake when we do a garret frill. You're working on the edge of your mold. And if you don't have a pad, you can actually do this on the edge of the silicone veiner as well. So that's done on the back side. And then all we're going to do is going to hollow on the front side. So you're just going to hollow the base of the bract like that. And then you're going to take your thumb and finger, so where the end of the wire is, you're going to uh, mask over the top and just going to bend the wire very, very slightly. And then you're just going to pop that into a crepe foam former or convoluted foam, all right? So you're just going to lay these into the foam former so they would just dry in a nice natural shape, okay? Now, if you don't have the convoluted foam former, just use some aluminum foil and uh, you can just sort of scrunch that up and lay that into there. Now then, when you move on to the um, next size up, all right, that would be a number seven small, okay? So that would be a number seven small there. And uh, so I'm gonna show you now, as I said, a different approach to this. So when you come to do the medium, and then these ones I normally make five of, okay? So on your production list, we're making five. So it's three or four of the small size and five of this medium size. So again, you're just gonna make this carrot shape about two thirds of the length of your piece. We've already put a little bit of fat in there. I generally just put a little touch of corn flour on there, all right, because then that means the back isn't gonna be sticky. I'm just gonna lay this in, and then what I actually do is I use the back of the veiner, and I'm just gonna press that. So that's just the way that I get that pressed into the mold. And then I'm just gonna finish this off with my cosmetic sponge. And it's just gonna work the paste down. You can use your fingers down here as well, okay? All right, now I'm going to establish a ridge. So I'm gonna use my fingers. I'm just gonna establish a slight ridge on the bottom half of that. So you just get that slight little ridge on there. When you do, if you're doing that on the small one, you can also do that just like with your little companion tool. So it's a little bit like almost a groove board technique. And then we're going to take, so these ones will also be done with 28 gauge wire. So I'm gonna just dip this one into 28 gauge wire. And you see you've got the little um, hollow here. This is where the wire goes in. I'm just gonna push the wire in and your wire goes in about halfway into the pedal. You can feel it tickle your finger in there. So now we're going to then take the back veiner, just as we did before, line this up. I'm just gonna press down there with my fingers over the surface of there. So you're gonna get the vein in. And then when you are doing these larger pedals, if you turn it back, and then you're just gonna just peel this off. I use my little flexi scraper here. That way you're not gonna distort or pull the wire out, okay? Then we're just going to just pinch around the bottom. And just as we did before, we're going to soften around the edge a little bit. Just a little bit, it's not real frilly flower, but just, just soften a little bit around the edge. And then we're going to hollow the base of the bract here. And then these were just you know, go in in the same way, just sort of lay these in. So they're just gonna dry in a nice sort of natural, natural shape. Now, once you finish the medium ones, remember we've got three or four small, which is on your production list. We have five medium. And now we're gonna move on to seven of the large ones. So these will be done in the same way, all right? This is, remember, going up now to eight small. The only difference is here, we're using a 26 uh, gauge wire. So this is just a little bit stronger. Remember, the higher the number, the thinner the wire. So this is 26 where the small and medium are on 20, um, 28. And um, I've already got one here prepped. So this would be pretty much done in the same way. Now, when you do this one, you notice how it's got this little like piece on the end here, like a little beak. What you can do is on a couple of them out of the seven, you can just trim that off. So what you'll have is you'll have some that will have this, I'll show you here. So you see I've like, got some like this and then some will, that will have the, little crook on there, and it just makes the petals look slightly different, okay? But all you do is just trim the top of two or three of them uh, to give you that shape. And again, just going to hollow the base of these. And then once you hollow the base of these, these again will just dry onto the, the crepe foam former here. So these are our um, colored bracts, but these could remember be white, they could be pink, they could be red, they could be burgundy, whatever color you want to make your poinsettia. I'll be right back after this short break.
Welcome back. So in this part, I'm going to show you the green bracts, or look like leaves, basically. And there are two sizes, a sort of a, a large, medium and then a large size one, okay? Now, uh, in your um, download for the small one, I generally would make three or five of just a slightly smaller leaf. When I do the large one here, I'm going to be making two of this size leaf, and then I'm going to make three of the bigger size one, okay? Now, when we do that, you're going to use number nine small and number 10 small, okay? So you're going to use a number nine that goes through the hole and a number 10 that goes through the hole. I'm going to show you the larger leaf. And uh, because these leaves are slightly different sizes, the, uh, this one goes on 26 gauge wire here, and then this one will go on a 24 gauge wire, okay? So we're going to use, a, so this one will be the bigger one, will be on 24 gauge wire. So very much the same. Now, the green paste I'm using, just like the red, uh, this is made to the, um, with the mixture of the uh, flour paste or flour and modeling paste, gum paste, mixed with the sugar paste rolled fondant. So I have here actually 85 grams of Renshaw green flour and modeling paste or gum paste, and I've added 15 grams of um, white sugar paste or rolled fondant to this. This just makes it a little bit lighter. Now if you wanted to keep this, for example, make it darker, you could use the green sugar paste, all right, or you can also make it more lime green by using yellow sugar paste. So there's different ways of obviously changing that. Um, so anyway, so we're going to take this and then um, this I haven't put any egg white in just to show you another alternative you can do is as you take each piece of paste you can just literally just touch an egg white a little bit of egg white onto there. So you can either use the pipette as I showed you for the red in the uh, previous uh, segment and then uh, add the pipette to the whole amount or as you use it you can work a little bit of egg white into this. Now remember this just gives the elasticity to the paste. Um, it's not so important like on the poinsettia uh, but it does help to stop the paste drying too quickly. Okay. So again, we're going to just take just very, very tiny amount of vegetable fat shortening. Now, the important is not to put too much on, because if you put too much on, what it means is you're going to have a, a layer of vegetable fat on your leaves. And then when you come to dust them, you'll find you're going to have problems with it, like smudging the dusting powder. And uh, so just like we did before, we're going to roll this into a carrot shape, about two thirds of the length of the cavity. I'm going to put just a little touch of corn flour, corn starch onto that. I'm going to place this into the mold. It's almost a combination, but because we've got, we're going to be pressing the back veiner on, the cornstarch on here will just stop that sticking. And then you take your back veiner, again, it's going to press your back veiner onto there, like that. There we go. All right, and then we're going to use your cosmetic sponge. You see, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start to work the paste into the tip, and I'm going to start to work the paste to the edges. So you'll get that sort of thinness then on the edges, a little bit thicker in the middle. But poinsettia petals are not really, really fine, you know, not like roses and things like that. So we're just going to just work this in. And also, once you get used to using Flower Pro, as I talk about in quite a lot of my Flower Pro videos, um, you can also reduce the amount of paste a little bit if you want to make it thinner. But uh, generally speaking, this will just help you to understand using the size guide of what you can use, uh, what you need to make that. And then again, we're going to now just create the, the slight ridge down here. So you're going to get that little sort of ridge down the um, leaf, the bract. And put some egg white onto there. And again, see this is very easy because of the channel. You see the little channel, the wire goes into the channel. So it's almost foolproof, really. You can't mess up here because the the uh, wire is going to go into about halfway in. If you should push the wire out, which you shouldn't do because it would just go in straight, you can just press it back in with your cosmetic sponge like this, okay? Um, and then we're going to take the back veiner. Just going to press this onto the top. Now the other thing with the back veiner, if you do, for example, take it off, but if you also always make sure that the wire is in the little V shape, it should always be pretty much in the center, you see? So you get your lovely veining onto the back. And again, remember, turn this over, just peel your veiner back, and then I'm using here my little flexi scraper. And uh, remember, I use this on the fabulous foliage. Just gonna mold around the back here. And again, we're just gonna pop this onto, so on the back of the leaf, we're gonna just gonna soften just a little bit around the edge, or as I said, on the soft side of a pad, you can use your, obviously, your, um, 
ball in tool there as well for that technique. And then we're going to just hollow, hollow this. I'm going to pinch this a little bit more like a sort of a taco shell, so you're going to get that slight sort of V shape. And then again, this will just dry in the former. So you're just going to dry this in the former like this. So again, your, your leaf will have this nice natural shape, you see? And that's how you would um, let your leaves to dry. But also remember, as I explained in the introduction to this, for example, this one here and this one here, you could actually use this and even cutting off that top piece, you could use these for leaves like gardenias and other things as well. So just make them in green. It's a great leaf mold also. So once you have the um, green bracts and the red bracts, or think of them like petals and leaves completed, you need to dry these. Now I use a food dehydrator, all right? And with a food dehydrator, I have this set at 115 Fahrenheit or about 46 centigrade. And I just would put them into the food dehydrator for about 90 minutes, they would be totally dry. Or just leave them for three or four hours or overnight at ambient room temperature, okay? But a food dehydrator is great, especially if you live in a high, humid um, environment. Now once they're dry, and they can go in the food dehydrator on foam, because it's not hot enough, it's going to melt the foam. What I'm going to do is going to then tape the base of the components. So I generally just use like a towel or washcloth or flannel here. I'm going to use some half width floral tape. So this is being cut with my tape cutter to cut this into half, all right, just by rotating the roll of tape. And um, just remember, floral tape, you always want to keep in a zip top bag so it doesn't get sticky, it gets uh, stay sticky, all right, and you're just going to stretch it slightly. Now we're going to Start taping the leaf. So when you start taping, you're going to be about two and a half centimeters, about an inch down the wire. We're going to go round and you're going to slide the floral tape up to the bottom and you're going to come down about half the length of the wire. So we're going to go round like this. You're just going to, and you see here, you have this like tube and this makes it very easy for it to slide right to the bottom. Because if you try and start your floral tape there, you're not going to get a nice start. I'm going to come about halfway down, which is about sort of about three centimeters, so about an inch and a quarter. And you're going to do the same on your larger ones here. Okay, so once you've taped all of your leaves or green bracts, we're then going to do the same with the, the red ones here. So we're just going to pop the red ones out here. I'm just going to group them into groupings. So I'm going to put my, as like I said, these will be my, and here are my remember seven, five, and then three or four of the small ones. Now when I'm doing, um, if I was doing say three poinsettias, I would sometimes change up the number of components. They don't look all exactly the same. And then again, you're just gonna just do this exactly the same way. So you're just gonna start your floral tape here. Gonna go round, gonna slide this up, gonna tape down about three centimeters, about an inch and a quarter down. And then we finish up the, all of the components. Now, a poinsettia is quite a lot of work. I mean, using my flower pro technique is a lot quicker than using traditional method of a groove board and then your cutters and then your veiners. But, uh, you know, it's still quite an investment of time. It is a really stunning flower to use. Um, so these are now ready for the next step, which is going to be the coloring. I'll be right back after this short break. Hi, hi Rascals, I am Kelly McWilliam, sugar artist, and on today's tutorial we are going to be making a this guy, my awesome mushroom man. guys as you can see we have an absolute ton of stuff to learn we're going to be learning how to make a basic structure to support your cake a little bit of cake carving and rice crispy work we have an absolute ton of modeling in this one and um, from sculpting a face to realistic hands and feet how to make this mushroom head and um, we have a load to do so let's get started well 
Welcome back. So now we're going to move on to the fun part, which is the coloring. So in this um, part, I'm going to show you the coloring and then final assembly. I'm using here a lime green dust, and uh, so sort of a limey green color. If you don't have any lime green, you can add the yellow to like a normal green. And then I'm going to use a small brush. Now, on the bottom of the nine uh, flower centers, I'm going to brush just a little bit of green, about a third of the way up. So I'm just using my brush back and forward here. So I would do that on the three little hearts. I do this on the three. Now on the, the one that's got like the lips, you're actually going to brush green all over, like almost like the turtle shell, the top part here. I'm going to put green all over this. So really what we're going to do is we're just going to end up with two yellow lips. You can see the little lips here. So you're going to just take your green here. So you see all I've got is I've got my two, my two yellow lips just coming up from the top here. So see you get the little like yellow lips there like so. All right. So it looks a bit like little frog's lips. And then we're going to then on the, this one, we're going to brush the green about a third of the way up on the one that's got the little like hairs on the top. Okay. So basically third on the hearts and on the one with a little, uh, like looks almost like a little spring onion, and um, the one that's got the lips on the green all over. Now then you're going to take some red, and um, so this is a ruby red. This is just going to give me a contrast to the, um, of course, the original red I'm using. And then I'm going to take, I want to make sure there's not too much color on the brush. And I'm going to just going to go in between the heart here with a little bit of, so I'm just using a small little flat brush here. You see how I'm just brushing backwards and forwards like that. So you're gonna get that little red on the indentation, you see? Okay, so that's gonna be how we do that one. Now the one that's got the lips on, you're actually gonna use your brush, again, hardly no red on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub backwards and forwards onto the lips here. It's just a little bit like, almost like lipstick. So you see how you're just gonna rub backwards and forwards there like so, so you almost put in like red lipstick on the, on the two little lips, okay? And then the last one we're gonna do is going to be the center, the little hairy one, so just on the top of those little, like little cuts we did with the scissors, just gonna just cut, just gonna put the red onto there, so you'll have your little, so those are gonna be your, as I said, your little centers, all right? So you've got your, your three heart ones, you've got the ones that are like the little lips, and then you have the ones that are on the top there. Okay, and then you just can like lay those on your towel or put those back in your styrofoam part. Now on the petals, all right, on the what we call in petals the red bracts. Um, obviously, you've got quite a lot of these. I'm just going to show you one of each size. Okay, um, so on those we're going to use the ruby color. So this is the same ruby I've just used, but here what we're going to do is we're going to use just a slightly bigger brush. Okay. And then what I'm going to do there is I'm actually just going to, a little bit like how I did the lips and things, I'm going to just rub over the surface of here. So I'm just going to use my brush and I'm just going to sort of just rub over gently. And that will almost like bring up the detail from the vena. And then down the back here, I'm just going to do like a ruby stripe. So just going to go down the back with a ruby stripe. Now this will become more noticeable when we steam the flower. So red on the, and then just almost like a stripe of the ruby on the back. And then we're going to do the same on the small one. So you're just going to go through, of course, all the, all of the red bracts. Then I'm going to take some of the green. So I'm going to use the same brush I used for here. And I'm going to put just a little bit of green at the base, both front and back on the bracts. So just a little bit of green front and back literally just coming down just a little ways with the green. This is a lime green color. Now, of course, there are many, many manufacturers of dusting powders. And um, so, you know, I'm just using my ones for my brand, which were pretty much matched to like the Sugar Flare line in the UK because I started obviously 40 years ago when Sugar Flare came into business about 30 years ago, I, they were really the first dusting powder. So my brand or my own range is based on the original Sugar Flare colors. So colors like ruby and lime are comparable to, to their colors. And now I'm going to then take 
Uh, this is aubergine, all right? So aubergine, which is uh, like basically in Europe, call it aubergine or eggplant here in the United States. It's this lovely eggplant color. And then I'm going to use my brush here. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use, this is an angle brush, and I'm just gonna brush a aubergine stripe down the center. So you're gonna get this slightly darker color. And you see then when this is steamed, this is gonna sort of just almost accentuate your uh, central lateral vein. So you can just put a little bit of the aubergine color just down the center, okay? And so you will continue with obviously all of those. Now these will be steamed, but in a flour like a poinsettia, it's much easier to assemble the flour first and then steam, uh, steam the whole thing, okay? Um, and then the final part is going to be the foliage, or, either, or like the leaves, the green parts here. So again, we're gonna use lime green, again, just like I did on the red, on the uh, red bracts. Gonna use a slightly bigger brush. I'm just gonna brush over the surface, sort of the middle area mostly with the green here. And this is gonna give me a foundation. And then I'm going to take a darker green. So this color is called forest green. So I'm gonna use some forest. And again, I'm just showing you one of the leaves. I've already have completed the other four. So with the forest green, we're gonna brush away from the source, away from the source. That means you're brushing from in one direction from the outside of the leaf coming down. Now for dusting the petals and the um, centers, you can don't need to put gloves on, but when you're doing the leaves, definitely here, I would recommend putting gloves on. And you're gonna just, but you see how you get this lovely shadow in then of the green. And then I'm gonna use that brush and I'm gonna put a lateral vein on here. So I'm gonna put a darker, lateral vein down the middle. And then I'm going to take, to finish up with a little bit of red. So I'm going to use my red here. and just gonna put just a little, the red is gonna come about a third of the way down. That's just gonna be done, as you can see, just on like the front part of the leaf. It's just gonna come down about a third of the way down. So the color will dissipate as it comes away from you. All right? So that would be the color. Now, of course, you can do these on, on individual little plates and then put it back in the, in the container. I'm just doing it on one napkin. And then once you have got the leaf completed, um, next step is going to be to move on to the steamer. So we're using a uh, closed steamer here. This is a small uh, little steamer. And uh, what we're gonna do is gonna steam the leaf because we have to, um, when we do the leaf, this is the sort of a tech defect we will get. You see this beautiful shaded of color. And um, so we need to steam it and that's going to set the powder, okay? So what we're gonna do here is just gonna just lightly pass the leaf through the steam just for a few seconds on each side. That's gonna set the powder. And then you can either use a leaf glaze, which is like a brush on glaze. This is diluted with uh, basically confectioner's glaze and usually a grain alcohol and several companies sell leaf glaze or dipping glaze. Um, so this is the diluted version of the confectioner's glaze. Um, in my next episode, when I'm doing things like the holly berries, because I want them to be very shiny, I will use confectioner's glaze, okay? But uh, leaf glaze, and then the other option is to use a spray lacquer. Um, so this is like the PME one, all right? Um, just remember, when you're using the spray lacquer, always use a protected surface. I generally, actually, in my classes, um, because we're on one level, normally we just set up a little table outside. The students just go out and spray their leaves. But don't do this on your dining room table or in your kitchen sink, okay? Do it on, obviously, protected surface or in a box. And you're just gonna spray that lightly onto the leaf. And then those, the leaves you want to, or the bracts, the green bracts, make sure you put those into a um, styrofoam block. So they're just gonna go into the block here to obviously just continue drying. And they usually take about 10 to 15 minutes. Again, it's gonna be dependent on your humidity level as far as like uh, how long uh, the leaves take to dry. So now we're going to divide the components up into three fairly even uh, groups, all right? When you make a poinsettia, we do this like three pieces of pizza or three pieces of cake. So obviously we have three of those, so these are dry now. So I've got three of those, and then we have two, so obviously like two of these segments will have the second leaf, all right? Now then you move on to, then we'll, we're working from the largest, because when we build, we'll work from the center. So we have seven of um, these, so I can do like two, 
three, and two. All right, but as I said, they're just, just what you're doing is just dividing your components up. The first time I ever made a um, poinsettia, I tried to build from the center and just add pedal and pedal and pedal, and it ended up more, more like a Christmas tree shape, okay? So then um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to then do the five. So I'm just divide those up and then you can just do, so then we can do one, two, and one. And then as far as the, um, the central components, you're gonna do one of each, one of each, and one of each, okay? So you see how you're just gonna just build them like this. All right, so this is sort of how you would um, position the, um, as I said, separate this. Now when we start building this, we're going to take some half width tape, okay? And I'm gonna take my three central components now obviously these are all slightly different heights. You can see the heart and then the one that like the lips and the onion one, but you can see you just put them together so they're the same height at the bottom, I mean the equal to the base. You're gonna start with your floral tape. It's gonna go around with your floral tape and I'm just gonna slide that up to the bottom, okay? It's because you're gonna get this grouping in the middle. Now, when you put these, when you bend these on the smallest pedals, remember the small and medium are on 28 gauge wire. So you're gonna come down about five millimeters down the wire and just gonna bend that, and you can bend them all, at the, you can bend them all before you basically start work if you want to. So you're just gonna just bend all of your, the pedal, the red bracks here, will be about five millimeters down. And so then what we do is you think of this as a, like a, like a, as I said, a third of a cake or a pizza. Just gonna start taping round. So you see how these will come out. And then once you, then you're gonna do the, the uh, medium one this one has just got, I've got, it's got a one. So think of almost like building like a third of a pie or a third of a pizza. Okay, so just, um, this is a much more successful way of doing the poinsettia, as you will see, and it gives you a more uh, accurate shape as well. And then you're just gonna just put in the, now the larger parts here. And of course, when you do those bigger pedals, you know, some of them we cut, uh, so they're more like similar shape to the small and medium, and then some we have with a like slight curl on the edge. Okay, and uh, so you see how you're almost doing like a third of a cake or a pizza. When you do the, um, and then when you do the um, obviously larger ones, you can use a pair of pliers. I mean, these are 26 gauge wire, but this is 24. That's really too strong to use uh, tweezers to bend. And so then you're gonna just put this in but you see how everything is sort of sitting at this sort of right angle to the, to the stem. And then here, it's gonna come from behind here, like so. All right, I'm just gonna tape, tape this in, and then you're just gonna just tape down the wire here. Just be careful of swinging these around, all right, because especially those outer pedals with that little hook on it, you don't wanna catch that. All right, so then you can just, don't worry too much about it, because once we get it together, we're gonna, we're gonna assemble them, but you see how you've done like a third. So now I'm just gonna continue that with my second and my third one. So then the last component will go into here. Of course, this one here has only got one leaf on it and you're gonna see how we put it together, final assembly in a second. Just take that nice and tightly. Okay, so we now have our three uh, components, one, two, and three, okay? Now you need to have a look and see because like this one, that this one has got like a large leaf and then like a smaller leaf here. And then I'm going to actually put, this one will go here because then that's another large leaf. But just need to make sure that you have your, like you don't have two, um, it's fine to have two large leaves, but you see how I've got the medium leaf here and the medium leaf here. Now, so you take two of your components 
And then what you're actually going to do here is I'm going to use a 20 gauge wire. So where they naturally meet, which is going to be about here, all right, that is where I'm going to add a 20 gauge wire. And I'm going to then just going to take the wire and I'm going to tape that. So I'm going to tape these two components in first. Just go around a couple of times with those. Then I'm going to take the third and final component and that's just going to sort of sit. So they almost will sit into like a triangle shape. So you can see from the back here, I'm just going to just tape up to where they naturally all come together and then you can tape down. Now, of course, depending on how you're going to use the poinsettia would depend on whether you cut the stem. If this was going to go into the top of a cake, um, like you can see here um, on the image, you would uh, generally cut this to about 10 centimeters, about four inches, or about seven and a half centimeters, three inches, if you're doing this on, say, a three inch or seven and a half centimeter cake. And of course, you'd use like a poly dowel. Um, so you'd use one of the dowels like this, and you cut that to the depth of the cake. And this slides in perfectly into the, uh, and that would just be pushed into your cake, all right? Um, in, um, once I get this finished, but in my next uh, episode on Green Tornado Live, I'm going to show you part two of this. I'm actually going to take uh, the poinsettia and I'm going to add some um, pine cones and needles and some spruce and also some uh, holly and mistletoe. And from my um, ultimate fill of, uh, from my um, fabulous foliage, I'm going to show you and also integrate the eucalyptus and the ferns into this. Now, what we're going to do now is you're going to then you see you're just going to carefully arrange your red bracts. So you just pull the red bracts around, you see. And just, just be careful of the tips of them, but you're just going to distribute those around. Now, so when you're doing this, so I'm going to leave this one on a longer wire because then when I've actually got the spray finished in the next episode, I will put this together. But if you were doing this on a, you know, for a cake, you can just do it like this. You can also, of course, when you do this, you can also just bend the wire like that. This could just sit on top of a cake like so. And of course, you could also use um, like tartan plaid ribbon. You know, obviously my mother was Scottish, so that's sort of a fabric I love to use around the holidays. So, you know, you could add a nice uh, sort of tartan bow to that, you know, just to obviously fill in the back of it. But uh, of course, you could obviously add other, um, other ribbons and things as well. Now, once you get this finished or to this stage, what we're gonna then do is we're going to steam the whole thing because the center of the poinsettia and also the red bracts, remember those weren't steamed. Now the steaming doesn't affect the leaves in any way, so it doesn't matter that we've got this, the leaves already finished. And that's really gonna set the powder and really bring the poinsettia to life, okay? So we're just gonna just, as I said, just lightly steam this. So it's gonna come in the steamer. It's gonna rotate this in the steamer. It's gonna come from the back as well. Again, just be careful of those little tips. Now alternatives to a steamer would be, uh, for example, a tea kettle you can use. We have to be a little bit careful because it's a little bit more severe, the steam. Um, you can also put some water into a saucepan of water and uh, a saucepan and then you can put some foil on the top of it and you can um, put a piece of foil on top, make some little holes in there and uh, then you can just, uh, when the water starts to steam, this will obviously give you your, your poinsettia. So here you have your beautiful poinsettia ready for the holidays for Christmas um, and as I said in um, my next episode, I were, was uh, going to show you obviously how to use the poinsettia as a sort of focal point for a spray with eucalyptus and ferns and pine cones and needles and spruce and mistletoe and holly. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode on making the poinsettia and I look forward to obviously seeing you in my next episode for the second part of this and our uh, Christmas in July theme. Now following this, Sydney Galpin from uh, Sydney's Sweet Adventures is going to also be carrying through a Christmas theme as well. So until next time, sweet wishes, I'll see you soon. This has been The Green Tornado, bye.